Hello everybody, this is Gamertag Your Willy for another tutorial. This one is basic menus. I'll explain pretty much everything that's inside each of the individual menus that you use in Forge. Uh, the first one, I'm going to pl explain a little bit more in depth on the building menu, which I explained how to get to it in the first tutorial. Now I'm going to explain a little trick, or not trick, but some things to keep in mind. So go to the build menu, which is X, and you go down to structure. Everything in structure counts in a category. So you got, you know, your category of building blocks, your category of bridges, your category for buildings. And in it, you will see a number at the very right. So this one's a hundred. That means I have a hundred building blocks. That doesn't mean I have a hundred one by ones, a hundred one by one flats. So what I what it means is like if I build this building block, now I have 99 in the whole category. 98, 97, so on and so forth. So you gotta make sure you remember how not only how much money you've spent, right now I have 9,950 yet because I've built five objects and each one is ten dollars but also how many in that category you have so things that are very limited are things like bridges you only have fifty of those you have twelve buildings you got a hundred of those you got fifty doors you got a hundred inclines you got fifty rocks or natural so you gotta make sure you keep track of how many you've used because it I've had it where I was building a map and I wanted to use certain objects but I ended up running out before my map could finish so I had to use other objects instead um, not everything is like that though only things that are in kind of the structure section is and things that are in uh, certain things in the spawning section are um, most things aren't. Um, like if you go into vehicles, you have eight banshees, eight falcons. You don't have eight of everything. You just have eight here and then eight of these. So on those, you don't have to worry so much. But if you go down to like warthogs, you got eight in that whole category. So now I have seven on each. So you also have to be careful on things like that. Now, I have this funky little stairway, but I don't want it anymore. I could hit Y on each one of these, but a quicker way to do that is if you go into B here, see at the bottom you got to delete all these objects. That shows up even if you're not holding it, so if I'm just looking at it, you can see that as well. Now, I say delete all these, yes, and now all the building blocks are gone. That's especially useful if you've placed a ton of spawn points everywhere, but then realize, oh wait, I don't want these spawn points where they are. So instead of hunting down each one of those and deleting it, you can do that. Another nice thing is like, let's say, you got your scorpion here, and you wanted to build it on the edge here, but you just didn't realize that it was off, and it falls to its doom. Well, you could go hunt it or have it fall and all that stuff each time. Or you can say just delete all of these and it'll delete the one that was down there. Now, another menu that you'll be using a lot is your project menu, or your prop, <laughs> sorry, objects property. So, I just build some cubes here. The objects property is if you're looking or holding on an object and you hit X that will show you the properties of that individual object so I can make this you know team reds and team blues and see it changes the color of it but the problem is, is if the red team isn't playing or the blue team isn't playing that will be the default color again it won't be the color you wanted to make it a color doesn't matter what team it is go down to object color and you can make it like this green color and so even if the green team isn't playing, it will still be green. Another um, 
part of this menu is the physics, which is a huge thing in Halo Reach. They did not have this in Halo 3. Physics, there's three different kinds. Normal, fixed, and phased. Phased is the general default for all objects. Not every object is default. Weapon, their default is normal. But um, most objects are default at phase, and that means it can intersect through the ground, or other objects, walls, whatever. It will intersect through them. Also, it means when you let go, it will be floating like that. Now, fixed is similar. If you let go, it stays. But if you're holding it, it will not intersect through other objects. But it will stay floating if you let go. Fixed or phased objects will still go through it when you're holding the phased object, but if you're holding that, like if you have this object phased, and then you go to hold the fixed one, it will freak out and try and push itself away. So be careful when you intersect the two different ones, make sure you're grabbing the one you want to grab. Another one is normal, which means everything applies to it. Gravity, it doesn't intersect objects, and that's really nice if you're building a, like a bridge, and part of the bridge is supposed to be destroyed, you could go down and spawn the piece and make it look like it fell that way, or you can just go to where that piece would be on the bridge, let go, have gravity apply, and then boom, you know, look, it looks like it fell. Build the next piece of it, make it normal, and let go, and then, you know, see now that is where that piece would be, you know? It makes it look more realistic on things like that. Um... You have an advanced object option in it, which you usually use when you're making game-specific stuff, which is this menu. And that means it'll only work for the game type you're working on. So right now I'm working on, um, see if I go in here, see basic editing on Forge World. That could say Slayer on Forge World or Infection on Forge World. And if you say true, Right now, because I'm on basic editing, that means this will only show up if I'm on basic editing. It will not show up on any other game type. Now, that's especially useful if you're building a map that works for more than one game type and you want it to look different, like my bumper head map, if you guys have seen that. If not, click the box in front of me and I'll uh, link you right to it. But that one has two different maps on one map, which means if you play Slayer, it will look one way. If you're playing Infection, it has a whole bunch of new walls. And I did that by making each of those walls game type specific true for Infection. So they won't show up on any other game type. If you're in the basic editor though, like I am now, all game types are considered true. So even if it's game specific true for Infection, if I'm on the basic editor, it will show up. I use this a lot when I have interior maps. Like, if I have um, like that whole Coliseum wall blocked off for whatever reason, I can go down under Gadgets here, spawn a teleporter. Let's go ahead and put it two-way. I can put one inside my map somewhere, and then one outside my map. And then I tell them to be game-specific true. Remember what I told you in the last tutorial, if you hit X to get out of a menu, then you can get back to it where you were. So, say game specific true. Now when I'm playing, let's say I play Slayer with my friends, this, t this teleporter will not show up. But if I'm editing, it will. So that's really nice to be able to get to the outside of your map with its only interior, things like that. It's a much easier way of doing it. Another thing that's in the advanced option is place at start. Now, this means at the very start of the game is that object there. And it's true for default. I'm going to go ahead and say false. But remember this, ingrain it in your memory unit. If that's a hard drive or your brain, ingrain it in there permanently. Never, ever, 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 ever say place at start is false and make this never. You want a spawn time, even if it's a second or if it's three minutes. You want it 
to have a time and I'll show you why I made that never I'm going to place another um, building block here and I'm gonna make this uh, blue and I'm gonna say place that start true and make this um, five seconds this one I'm gonna say never and I'm gonna make it red as I never ever do that now when I uh, start a new round it will only show up if you start a new round or if you end the game and you start a new game but if you start a new round which is much quicker round than ending over. the game and starting again you will see that that object is not there and it will never be there ever <laughs> it's permanently gone there is really no way of fixing it um, it's it's more like a slap on the hand and damn I should never have done that and usually it's not too costly I mean it only cost me 10 but that's 10 I could use for something else and that object is permanently gone too so if you were doing something like that and you did it on a building not only are you hundred and fifty dollars short but you're also a whole building short so that can really cost you something um, so remember if you do game place a start fa uh, false make sure that the spawn sequence is um, a certain number I just realized that I, that was accidentally true. I thought I changed that. I'll go ahead and start a new round. Round over. Just to show you what would happen if you set it up properly. See the object is gone, just like the other one, but in about five seconds it appears. So it won't ever be gone, and the longest it'll ever be gone is three minutes. Or sorry, yeah, three minutes. Which is good if you're making like a map where walls spawn, or if you want guns to spawn, or custom power-ups to spawn later on set up how long you want it to wait and that's from when the game starts so if you're playing a custom game you gotta time it right so you know set the time spawn it all that stuff um, the other sets is symmetry I never use it so don't bother um, and game label which there is no labels but I will show you that in more detail when I explain custom game types Minimum and maximum count means how many is on the map at one time. And even if you set this to two, see it says it thinks there's another one on the map. That's why it says max count two. Um, even if I say there has to be two on the map at one time, it will not show up. But that's especially useful if you have things like explosives under gadgets, explosives, landmines. Let's put one there, one there, and one there. Um, looking at it I'd say I want a max of three that means those three have to be there I'll actually even say it lower than that I'll say two has to be on the map at any one time and I blow them up when the explosion goes away see now there's two it's really useful if you have like let's make it one um, let's say you have a line of explosives and you're and you don't want them to respawn instantly but you want to make sure that it works and keep testing it over and over again you could wait 30 seconds or you can look at it and say I want a max of three so that way you can test the explosives and then it's like oh there's a too big of a gap over here so grab it and push it a little bit closer and then test it again it's like okay that's perfect go in make it zero again and now it's back to the default but it helps you test that type of stuff those are menus in a little bit more detail I hope that helped I'll explain spawn sequence game type labels and all that stuff when I start doing maps that require it so the game type specific maps I hope this helped you and I'll be making another video very soon about spawning so I hope to see you all there if you wish to see any of my other tutorials click the menu button there then click basic tutorials and I'll show you all my basic tutorials and I will see you all later. This is Gamertag, your Willie, signing off.